hello everyone how's everybody doing i hope all is well with you and your families i am doing great i feel great i feel so revived last week was the best week ever <laughs> it was my birthday it was women's conference i felt so good i felt like i was being celebrated guys and people did not even know it was my birthday on the day it started but it was awesome i don't know what it is about seeing other women doing their thing winning in life hearing other women's testimonies wow i was i, I just feel so encouraged so revived renewed I am on cloud nine, guys. I am on cloud nine. I am so grateful. You know, it made me miss home, you know, back home. Like, I grew up in Anglican Church. So, they have this mother's union. I don't know if they are still doing it now because of the COVID thing. But every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday every week, they would meet as women, you know, to just encourage each other and do you know everything else and do good stuff you know for the community and all that uh i i wish they did that here you know that would be awesome like every week let's meet let's encourage one another you know let's inspire one another and do all those good stuff but you know i i understand it's a different world people are busy and tired and nobody's thinking about going to week to church every saturday then go back on sunday i know i know but that would be awesome though if you think about it uh, anyway, guys, you're new to this channel. Thank you for joining me. My name is Nancy, and today we'll be talking about triggers. So I know, you know, if you watch my videos, you you know that I always mention uh, about these triggers. That if you master your triggers, your healing process will be an easy ride. It will be an easy process. But the number one thing you have to master is these triggers. So uh, let me define triggers. Well, you know, because I know there are good triggers and then there are bad triggers, they say. I am going to be talking about uh, uh, the negative triggers here because that's what I know. That's what I have dealt with uh, like since, I don't know, forever. I don't know, since okay. when. Since when. So my for me, as I, I didn't even know what triggers were until I started going through my journey. Uh, so how I would define triggers is, I would say triggers, um, it's more like an alert uh, in your soul, in your head, or in your, in your thinking. It's like an alert uh of something that you in a led to an issue that you have buried or that you are running from so for me i i'll say for now i would think uh when i see a trigger when it when i'm being triggered uh i i see it as like god pointing to me telling me to deal with an issue that I am refusing to deal with or an issue that I'm running away. So it's more like an arrow to me, back to me. That's what I see, you know, a trigger being. So it's, it's like, um, it's pointing to your psychological issue, uh, which is negative, that is bringing you, pulling you down. And this issue uh, seems like uh, you don't want to deal with the issue you don't want to look at the issue face to face that's what I would think uh, that's how I would define a trigger so um, triggers they thrive if you are not self aware of yourself is it even a good thing self aware of yourself well let me say they thrive if you don't know yourself and triggers thrive if you keep on running and you don't want to face that thing eye on eye, face to face, they thrive because you, you are running. They also okay, so some of the signs uh, that you will see when you are being triggered, I'm talking specifically to those uh, individuals who have been through traumatic situations. Uh, for example, for me, uh, what I 
uh, what I saw was like, let's say I'm in a happy environment and all of a sudden this uh, sadness overwhelms me and I, I just cry uncontrollable. Like I will just cry and cry and I'm not crying in public per se. I might go to the restroom, to the bathroom and cry and then come and act like everything is okay, but I would have cried a lot. Or some of, one example I can give you is um, if it's an anger outburst, because that's one of those, the signs that you have been triggered. Like, let's say I come home, I see a, a plate in the sink, just one plate, or let's say two plates. Instead of acting or responding to that one plate in a normal way and just ask uh, who left their dishes in the sink please come and wash your dishes no i wouldn't do that i would angrily uh respond to the situation i'll just i'll burst in anger i'll be so angry and then when i look at the situation later on i'm like oh my goodness was that wasn't even called for an outburst but because that dish represented something, it was a dirty dish, it triggered something in me, you know, like, oh, I'm dirty or whatever it is that was triggered at that time, that became becomes a trigger. So even let's say, for example, I see even a socks, one sock on the floor, it, can, it became a trigger. So I'm just telling you this, that, you know, so it can be just all of a sudden sadness uh anger outbursts are triggers uh that you they are telling you exactly the issues that you have buried or something you are running from or the fear or you have this fear that comes upon like on you let's say you are with uh people in a room uh especially when i started when i went back to school i started seeing this uh anxiety thing uh anxiety attack it's like we are supposed to write uh, uh, repre uh present something in the front of the class oh my goodness i couldn't do it i couldn't do it i couldn't do it i would make thousands of excuses not to be in to be at school that day because i couldn't represent uh something in front of the class i had this fear i had this uh self-sabotaging thing in my mind like oh you're not good enough oh no no you're not gonna present this well so it will it, it it just it was a trigger to me i couldn't present anything so that can be also um uh signs that you're being triggered to look at the situation you're refuse, refusing to uh to look at or situation that you have buried uh another trigger uh sign of a trigger uh will be death it can be death of somebody you love or it can be death in of a job you lose a job or you move to a new job and you meet other new personalities and things like that that can trigger you too especially if you are a runner you go job to job job to job job to job you it's you think you're doing yourself a favor but what's happening is uh and i'm talking to people who have been in traumatic situations here because you run a lot so you're thinking if I go to this job, it's going to be better, but you're going to meet other things, new triggers, because you're just failing to deal with your issues. So I think that, you know, those were most of the things that I personally uh, saw as, um, as signs that have been triggered. The, uh, the anger outbursts, the um fear anxiety uh different jobs or deaths in the in the family it didn't matter who died it can be a, uh someone i know or anyone death was just a trigger um and um what else uh that sudden sadness from Norway, you know, things like that. So yeah, these are triggers. If you fail to 
face it, to ask yourself, okay, God, I'm being triggered right now. And this is, you're talking to yourself. You're not saying it out loud. You're just talking to yourself. Okay, I'm being triggered right now. What's going on? What's going on right now in me? What is it that I'm running from? What is it that I've buried? If you fail to do that, uh, which I did many, many times, if you fail to do that and you just decide to keep on running, it's going to contribute to more shame. Uh, let's say for me, for example, is uh, when I ran, right? I failed to look to at my situation eye on eye. I found myself, let's say if I was at a wed uh, wedding and I started crying from nowhere or a birthday party and I started crying, crying, crying. Uh, afterwards, you feel this shame, especially if you did it in front of people. I know one one incident where I just couldn't stop crying and people didn't know what what was wrong and then I just I just kept telling them oh I'm so happy I'm so happy for them you know but it wasn't the truth or let's say on those anger outbursts at home where I just become angry because of one uh, socks one pair of socks on the floor or one dish a dirty dish in the sink uh, you uh, after I do all that uh, react in that negative manner I, I would feel this shame now now I'm ashamed why did I have to do that that was not even necessary you know so you it it's all it, this uh, failing to deal with your triggers is is always going to contribute uh, in that shaming thing you're just going to be feel ashamed all the time and uh you will uh be oh you you always be frustrated you will always be frustrated uh because like let's say if you're going from job to job you think oh if i go to this new job huh, i'm gonna find myself i'm gonna know who i am and then you are disappointed you're like okay there's more issues of its own you are just going to remain frustrated always hurt always insulted you feel insulted all the time you always be making wrong assumptions that's what it does it just because you're failing to look eye uh, face to face with this uh, issue that the trigger is showing you and mind you always remember that these triggers and um, it's not the people it's not the people who who uh are the problem here it's inside yourself it's just showing you what's wrong inside you what what you are bearing so that's why you would always be making wrong assumptions all the time you always be making wrong judgment always judgmental yeah um, uh, you always be self-sabotaging yourself all the time you want to make a decision to to let's say you're in class uh, the professor asked you, asked the class, uh, any suggestions, any questions, things like that. Then you have a really good que uh, question or you, ha you really have a good contribution or, you know, uh, input in that matter, whatever it is. But your mind now tells you, oh, uh, no, that's stupid. Uh, no, you cannot say that. Oh, you can't ask that. Ah, uh, don't you do that. It's like you're, you're always in self-doubt, self-sabotaging yourself all the time. And then you discover that two minutes later, that same thing that you were thinking to ask, another person asks, and be, it becomes the thing that the class ends up using because it was a great idea. Now you are... You are beating up yourself. Why didn't I ask this? Why didn't I say this? I wanted to say that. Because you are all, you always be self-sabotaging yourself. That's what uh, triggers do. That's the result of not what triggers do. But that's the result of not facing what those triggers are showing you to look at. The issues. Not facing your issues face to face. Uh, the other thing what they would do is... Um, uh you always be in an emotional wreck one miniature up 
one minute you are down the people around you they don't know if you are if if today uh they they are working on uh chicken eggs ostrich eggs or whatever eggs because you you are unstable in your emotions very unstable you know it, 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 because why why you become unstable is because you don't know what the problem is you know what the problem is but you are choosing not to deal with the issue so you become unstable because you're just so emotionally um you are just in an emotional wreck i'm sorry to say but that's how i felt you know, so if you are in the same situation, it's because you are running from the issues you have. You are running from whatever you have buried. And for it, for this thing to, for you to just uh, start functioning in a, in, in a, you know, in the way you want to function, you just have to face it. Face whatever is chasing you. Face whatever those triggers are pointing at because you know yourself you know exactly if you go deep down with that thing you know exactly where they are pointing at uh yeah and also if you don't deal with those issues you have your ego keeps on growing when people try to point at your problem you're always defensive you are always going to be in that defensive posture because you feel attacked uh, the ego is telling you I've been attacked here so then you th that ego grows big and I'm talking about the negative ego here so yeah you always feel attacked and you those anxiety attacks the panic attacks it seems they will not go away because you, again you don't want to deal with it so the anxiety grows and grows until you visit whatever you're running from that was my experience, guys. So, so what I would do in the in the presence of a trigger, I would look eye, eye to eye, face to face with that trigger. I tell myself immediately, this is not about this person. It's something happening internally. This is inside you. So don't attack the person. Because in the past, immediately I want to attack. You attack me, I, I, would, I would look at that trigger as an attack. You attack me, I'm going to defend myself, I'm going to attack you back. And I'm not talking about physically attack. It can be attacked with my mouth. I, I used this mouth to attack people. God forgive me, you know. But that's what I would do to defend myself. So, but now, now since you, when you know better, you do better. So instead of attacking the person, you are telling your, yourself now, no, this trigger is pointing to something that is inside you. So I would make a decision to respond if effectively rather than emotionally. Because all wh what I knew back then is to respond emotionally. And that will end up being bad and that will end up me being ashamed and all that. But now responding effectively is I will ask myself questions. Okay, I'm going to face you, uh, Trigger. What are you telling me? I take all my triggers now as information. Like, oh, thank you, Trigger. You're bringing some information. Okay, what is it? You know, like, uh, for, for example, since the passing of my parents, I saw that it, uh, their death were trying to, first it was my dad and then my mom, but then I saw that they were trying to pull me down to my past, you know, to go backwards. But once you are developed, uh, a little bit developed, a little bit mature, you know how to deal with these triggers. So instead of me uh, drowning in uh, drowning in my emotions, I effectively tell myself, you know, uh, you okay? They're in a good place. That that's nobody's fault. Uh, you know, give it to God, and emit, you know, you just you have to just talk yourself out of it and go to the source okay is it because i'm still in pain uh why am i being triggered right now oh, i miss them 
is it okay to miss your parents yeah it's okay I'm, this is going on in my mind it's okay i miss my 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 parents i miss this so i try not to then drown myself and take a bucket of ice cream and be crying and sad and be angry because i can choose to do that but now i just make a choice make a choice to effectively deal with the situation that i am in you know um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i intentionally make sure it works most of the time and it will work for you if you do that so that's what i would say you know that's the best way to deal with a trigger if it's present in that moment really it's just to look don't run just look at the situation and ask yourself okay what are you pointing at is it something i can deal with it right away or is it something that I need more research, books to read, I need prayers, or I need people, I need therapists. You know, if you can afford, you know, therapists, some situation I call for therapists, you know, whatever it is, that's how you can, uh, I would, that's my advice to dealing with the trigger right away. But one thing I've learned, guys, is triggers and um, uh, that's not from people because you cannot heal a trigger Tri because triggers just are going to be available everywhere where you tend especially if you're someone who went through trauma it seems like everything even a tree can trigger you even grass can trigger you anything can trigger you so you can't say oh how can i heal from a trigger there's nothing to heal from them they are just information they are giving you information to what you need to deal with within yourself. That's what I do. This is my advice, guys, to uh, those uh, individuals who are, who are dealing with trauma and you are in, on your healing journey. Since you cannot control the triggers that people bring to you because people don't know your issues, so they are just going to be themselves. So since we can't control the triggers, then this is what worked for me seek god with everything that you have with everything that you are just seek god why i'm saying this before i i, I knew god and i was just doing church thing just going to church uh doing things in my own uh effort i read any book that had anything that i saw that i'm suffering from uh and i see it whether it's a uh, buddha books whatever book that was out there that i thought okay they are talking about my issue let me read this so i can help myself it was like even after reading the books before knowing god after reading those books it seemed like inside me i was so stony inside so hard that nothing penetrated nothing nothing was just was in my mind nothing went in my mind so it's only after after i started having a, 
you know a personal deep relationship with god that you know and when i said enough is enough when i was so sick of me sick of failing over and over nothing was working and then i said you know what god help me and then that's when i started uh opening up like why i i always say you need to see god for yourself is because he knows why it happened whatever happened to you he knows what to do in that situation he created everything the good the bad everything was just created by god uh it was people's choices to act in a bad manner or whatever they acted or whatever situation that would have happened you know only him knows why it happened the way it happened so at the end of the day you just have to give yourself grace and say you know what it's not my fault god i need help help me to how can i come out of this situation and just start from there once you start developing that relationship with god i'm telling you whether it's one book that you will start with he will direct you to that book like for example for me when i started uh seeking god like i need help i'm at the end of myself i i started seeing this one preacher on the tv and maybe the whole entire message i won't hear anything that he said but i would catch one phrase or one thing that you he would say like maybe you would suggest a book and I'll catch the book name and I'll buy the book and I'll read that book. But guess what? Maybe in that whole entire book, I only get one point that I would, maybe they talked about meditation and maybe they would have said, oh, meditation work and that clicks. And I'll go in that meditation thing. And during meditation, maybe something comes by again. They will say something and then I'll, so it's it, it just little, it's so tiny steps that god will put in your way in your path but it will help so that's why i always say just do that even let's say you are fortunate enough to afford a therapist right uh he will direct you to the right therapist uh, that can help you unfortunately for me during my time when i was going through my healing journey therapists never even entered my mind i thought counselors whatever therapies you know professional help was for people who i saw in my country walking naked talking to themselves that's what i thought i i, I was just i didn't know it was uh I, you could go there and get help it was not popular I, even in church, I never heard anyone talking about, oh, you need therapy, go to the therapy, you need, the I never heard it in church. So it never came in my mind. So I, the only counselor, the one, only wonderful counselor I knew was God. And that's where I ran to. I guess God was sick of me just going back every day. Even when he told me do A, B, C, I fell, I go back. Oh God, you got, you have to help me. You have to help me. It was just that. So I just knew that and that's what I, I did. So yeah, so let God lead you to your ther uh, therapist because, you know, some situations are just, are just called for a therapy and it, there's nothing bad. Now we know Christians, we know that yes, therapy is right. needed. So, you know, needed. but most importantly though, do not ignore those triggers those triggers will point to those unresolved issues that you are battling with inside they are they are information carriers like for me i told you that you know what i just see those triggers like god's hand just showing me why i am stuck why i am where i am just showing me exactly to deal with whatever it, that issue is, whether it might be unforgiveness, anger, hurt, whatever it is that he's uh, telling me, you would show me with those triggers. That's how I, I do it. So once you are self-aware self of whatever is going on inside you, now you have to just fight with that word of god that's why I, I just say you know what once you know god 
just learn one scripture a month, two scriptures. Uh, if you're I going through a know. healing process, don't you worry about what them other people say. You learn you some scriptures. Even if it's one scripture the whole entire year that you know of, it's worth it. God always look uh, in the on your uh, looks in the heart your intention if your intention is to for you to win for you to be better for you to be healed then god will meet you right where you are but if your intention is for oh look at me i know this of course god is gonna humble you quick so don't you worry about oh my goodness how can i be saying this and that? get you the bible find you a scripture to your situation and that will help you especially when those anxiety attacks come at 12 midnight 11 p.m 1 uh, a.m no one will be there but you by yourself but if you have that word uh let's say you only know two words or or i'm um, the righteousness of god or you know um no weapon formed against me shall prosper uh you know Sometimes you might not even remember the scriptures, but guess what? What whatever you are studying will come to your mind at that moment. Even it means like, oh, I am fearfully, wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, God is on my side. God is my defense. He is my strong tower. You can keep on saying it and saying it and saying it until that anxiety goes away. So don't you, don't you uh, worry about all oh, they say she is this or he is this. You learn you some scriptures. That's going to be the weapon like no other. Even after you go get out of that therapy uh, session, you have one scripture for your situation that is going to help you when that attack comes. When you feel angry, you're just going to have uh that scripture that's talk about anger or something on your lips like or you have like if you're someone who likes to yeah 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 a lot now you have one scripture maybe that to remind you that uh, uh but i'm a christian here the words that come out of my mouth are supposed to be wholesome so i'm not gonna open my mouth and talk rubbish here i have to say wholesome words you might not remember uh word by word by word uh, the scripture but guess what whatever you know that word becomes life and it starts just um, washing whatever that was sticking on you. you. I'm telling you. Learn you some scriptures and you fight with some scriptures because that's going to be your key right there. Because when the devil tries to disturb your peace at night, uh -uh, tell him no. God is my peace. He's the perfect peace. I have perfect peace. I walk in perfect peace. I walk in, uh, um, what you call this thing? Uh, confidence. I walk in, you know, you start saying all these things that you've been studying over and over because fast, guess what? fast, what fast and pray. You know, even if you do start with one fast a year, you know, one fast a month, it's okay. I started, I didn't know what fasting was. I fasted because I wanted my dad to be healed and he end up, ended up going to be with the Lord. I was angry, but I kept on fasting. Uh, I couldn't even stop. Keep on fasting. Keep on fasting until you get to once a week or whatever, once a month or twice a month, twice a week, whatever it is that works for you. It just... As you keep on going, uh, doing it, uh, you'd learn that it's just going to, you, it seems like God shows you, you. Let me tell you, when you fast, it's like everything goes wrong. At first I was like, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? It seems like they, they, all the wrong stuff, the demons, whatever, they wait for the day I am fasting. But I figured that that's when I really learned who i was and where my triggers were where i was um my where my issues were and uh what was going on with me inside so that the, the fasting is just going to show you who you are where you are what you need to deal with 
And in you doing that, God, I just believe God opens you more and more and more. You draw closer as he draws closer to you. So, yeah, don't discount that fasting thing. And fasting is, you know, there's different types of fasting, you know. You do your research and see which fasting you want to do. But do it anyway. It will help you guys. It will help you. And the other thing is keep reading those books. Find books that uh, talks about your issues. Read those books. No matter some some books are like, well, I didn't learn anything. Maybe it's because you're not there yet. You're still closed out. So you just go to another book. You will find that maybe you will return to that book and then you will learn something. So just keep on doing your research. You find information that talks about your situation and keep on going and listening to those messages, listening to inspirational people, listening to, you know, uh, things that that is talking about your situation. Invest in yourself, especially if you really, you know, I, I don't know what situation you are in, but if you went through a traumatic thing, you just need to do this every day. So guys, if you fail, keep on trying again and again and again until you get to that healing you so desire god will never fail you we can only fail ourselves because we would have quit trying so keep on researching and if you like journaling like i love to journal at first it started as a negative thing i would write these horror movies in my own journal just writing oh they were bad i had to get rid of those but when my healing started i started writing of who i wanted to become who i wanted to see my like i, I started uh imagining the person i want to become i wanted god to show me uh the the to show me me the way he he saw me the way he sees me so journaling is a really good thing if you like writing if you don't hey find something that you like doing meditation or something go you know be by yourself it's a very good way to see where you are what's going in your mind things like that so what can you learn guys well just first just trust yourself that you can control your emotions your emotions cannot control you you can control your emotions start from there and tr trust god that he will help you throughout the whole entire process he will never leave you he will never forsake you if you believe that you will be okay and then take those triggers as uh, information bodies they are there to give you information uh, of what you need to resolve inside you and then you take those uh triggers as like stepping stones like stepping like a ladder use them as like like a ladder like the you you a ladder that you can climb to your healing so when you see a ladder just see that th those are your the triggers are just lining up forming a ladder so that you can go on top of it the, the, when you uh, solve the first issue you go to the next you go to the next until you get to the top of the ladder and then you grab your healing you know so take it like that and stay on those scriptures your those scriptures will be your your make them your best friend especially if you are in that season of anxiety attack start with five scriptures or one scripture a month and just keep on meditating on that scripture especially when you are being attacked with fear anxiety Find that one scripture for your issue that is bothering you. And when that thing comes, you recite those scripture over and over and over again. It will work for you. But if you refuse to face uh, those triggers, 
it becomes more like uh, I'm just gonna tell you a scenario what I felt at the end at the end of my suffering when I was now at the peak of my suffering you you it feels like you are in the in the sea or in the pool or river a dam whatever it is you want to call it and you are drowning and you have all these people around you who are trying to like come um, give you a hand to help you come out of it like we are here to save you but you are there refusing to be saved but you are drowning you don't like it that you're drowning you are trying to to get some air you are trying to breathe you can't breathe you are choking you feel like you're dying yet god or whoever is around you is trying to pull you out but you're refusing you're attacking the people who are trying to save you it doesn't make sense but that's what it looks like so yeah uh just face whatever is chasing you just give yourself grace stop in that midst of that trigger face it and ask god to show you where the issue is and ask him to help you uh to uh solve whatever issue that might be so that's it for today guys i hope uh this will help somebody out there and yeah until next time thank you for watching and thank you for always uh uh supporting me you have a blessed week i'll see you next time thanks bye